Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial on Photoshop. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the Marquee tool. And if you're new to Photoshop, you might be asking, what is a Marquee tool? Well, um, it is basically a tool that allows you to mark off a certain section of your photograph and uh, be able to cut it out much like you would uh, with a regular photograph with some scissors, just cut out a certain area so that you can use that portion of your photograph in various ways. Let's open up some shots here. Let's go up to File, Open, and choose a few shots from our folder here. Maybe a couple of sunsets. Uh, maybe some children. Here's another sunset that's nice. Young girl from Ethiopia. Well, that's probably good. And you'll see that these open up. Each of them are referenced here at the top by the tab. You can tab between the various shots up here. Before we get started uh, taking a look at the marquee tool, I just want to point out a couple of things uh, if you're new to Photoshop. And perhaps we'll do this in every lesson, just show you a few of the basic skills in each lesson that we do. In this one, I want you to understand how you can zoom into a photograph and zoom out. It is something that you will do a thousand times a day if you're working on photographs and it really helps you work with uh, close details of a photograph but then back off so that you can be able to see the whole picture again. And uh, the best way to do this is with keyboard shortcuts. And it's a good idea to start learning the keyboard shortcuts of Photoshop because it will save you hours of time. And to zoom in on a photograph it's really a combination of two keys. Hold down your control key and go over to your plus key. Uh, well, it's a plus or a equals key depending on how you look at it. But holding down your control key, hit the plus key and you can see you can zoom into your shot. Hit the minus key and you zoom out. So plus, minus, it's a good idea to catch on to that. Now something else that I think is important for us to uh, point out as we get started in Photoshop and that is to be able to work with the history palette. Now mine is open here but yours may not be displaying here. I've probably placed this here with my version of Photoshop. It may not be showing up on yours by default. So if you don't see a history palette anywhere and you can move these palettes around, place them wherever you want. If you don't see a history palette, what you need to do is go up to the window tab up here on your menus and make sure that your history is checked. If it's not checked, go ahead and click on that, select it, and when you select it, it will show up somewhere. It may not show up in this exact same place that I've put mine, but remember, you can move these palettes around and place them however you like. Uh, just depending on how you want to you know, design your desktop. Another very important palette uh, that we need to have open is the Layers palette, and it should be there by default with Photoshop, but just in case it isn't, go up to Windows again and make sure that uh, Layers is checked. And if it's checked, it should be showing up over here. And again, you can resize these. If we were working with a really small screen, perhaps an older laptop, uh, we, and we needed the extra space to work with our images, you can take any of these tabs and bring them over and place them inside another palette. And that frees up some room. And then at any time you can just tab through any of the uh, palettes that you need to be working with at any given time. But since we've got lots of room on this one, we'll keep our history palette out here so that we can easily work with it at any time. Now, what I've done here is I've gone up to uh, this little tab up here and click on it. It's got a drop-down menu. And here you can reset the essentials. And uh, it also gives you some options if you are working in photography or typography, painting, motion, 3D. Uh, you can choose any one of these default workspaces uh, that will optimize your workspace for this type of work. <clears throat> I think Essentials is probably good. So if you would like to you know, be a, kind of on the same page as we go through these tutorials, maybe you want to click on Essentials and that way yours should look identical to mine. And uh, I'm not sure 
if this was in previous versions of CC, I'm working in Photoshop CC 2015. So if you're on an earlier version like Photoshop 6, uh, this particular feature may not be there, but you should be able to kind of recreate a, a similar looking workspace. Now we've kind of lost our history palette, but I believe it's still up here just kind of hidden. Let's open this up. Yes, here's our history. And if we wanted to make more space for the history palette, we could maybe get rid of some of these or, or drop them into one of these other tabs, one of these other palettes. Okay, so now we have a pretty good looking workspace. We can start checking out our marquee tool. And for this particular tutorial, I think we'll work with a, a different image. I kind of like this one here of the uh, pagodas in Myanmar. And if you haven't visited Myanmar, especially this part of Myanmar, Burma, if you're more familiar with that older name of the country, uh, this is a, a place in Myanmar called Bagan, and it has thousands of these amazing temples from long ago, and uh, it's just a great place to do some photography. This was a sunset that I took from on top of a pagoda looking out over the landscape. Well, what can we do with the marquee tool? First of all, where is it located? It's up here in the tool belt, shall we call this, where all of our tools are stored. And the marquee tool is the, the second one down. This is the move tool. Once you select that, you can move things around. It's a very important tool to know, and, and we will use that in a minute. But the marquee tool is the one right below it. And notice that in addition to this rectangular marquee tool, there's a flyout menu here. If you just click the corner, you'll see that uh, you also have an elliptical marquee tool. And we'll maybe take a quick look at both of them. Let's start with the rectangular. Once you have that tool selected, when you now go to your image and click down with your left mouse button and start sliding your mouse across your mouse pad and move it kind of in a downward right hand motion, you can select a certain area of the image that uh, may be of more interest to you or a selection that you may want to use in a different way. Because once you let this go, you have now uh, placed a selection around an area that you can now manipulate uh, or copy and paste. Let's maybe show that first. Just hit down your uh, control key and the C key like you would in a word processing program to copy this. And now hit the paste button and you'll see that you have created a second layer up here. Uh, if you go over to your layers palette, you'll see that you've created a second layer where you've copied just the selection that we've pasted. And while it might not look like anything has happened to our image, if we go back to our move tool now, we could point to that area and see that we have a copy of that area that we've selected. We could, while it's still in our clipboard, uh, create a new document, a new project, and when the dialog box pops up, we see that it defaults to the clipboard size. So if we just hit OK now, what's going to happen is it's going to create a new document the size of the selection that we made. And we could right now just hit the control V as in Victor key, just like you would and again in a word processing program, and you have pasted in your selection into a new document. If we wanted to, we could uh, open up one of our other photographs and do again a control V and bring that selected area into our other photograph. And notice over here, we've what we've done is we've created a layer. So it's not destroying the image of the lady. If we went and made sure that we have our move tool selected, we'll see that we can move the selection around. We haven't destroyed the layer beneath our selection, but we might find use where we could show one image on top of another. And if it's not quite the right size, that's okay. We can resize this uh, to be a little smaller if we like. Just hit the Control T key and you'll see that uh, that area is um, selected with a border. And now if we go and point to one of the corners, you'll see that your cursor changes to a, an arrow going both directions. 
And by holding your shift key down to maintain the correct aspect ratio, we can now resize this to any size we want. We could even make it bigger, but that's not a good idea because you're going, you're going to start getting pixelated. But you can always go smaller and it's not going to uh, affect the quality of the image. Okay, and then when you're happy with your size, you could uh, just accept that by hitting the enter key. And now your selection uh, is maybe a better size to be uh, as an insert in another photograph. Let's maybe go back to our image. And let's try something different this time. And just so that we don't get confused, let's maybe get rid of this layer, this first layer. And you can do that just by pointing over to your layer in your layer palette and by holding your mouse down, drag this down and just throw it in the trash can. In more recent versions of Photoshop, you can also just, if it's you see it selected, you can just hit the delete key and it's gone. And if it's not selected, you can just point to it so it's selected before you hit the delete key. Okay, so let's go back to our marquee tool and notice how we can um, use some keyboard shortcuts and uh, choose some alternative uh, icons up here to do something interesting. First of all, let's select a fairly decent area again. But let's say this time we don't necessarily just want to stick with the very boring rectangular shape and we kind of want to do some interesting things with it. Well, we could go up to our uh, little menu palette up here and click on this one and this allows you to select more rectangular shapes but you see how it affects the way the cutout is going to be. And if at any point in time you decide, no, that's not quite the shape that I wanted, well, all you have to do is hit the Control D key, D as in dog, and your selection disappears and you can start over again. And once you've got an interesting shape that you're happy with, remember that you can just cut that out again by hitting the Control C key. Now you've made a copy of that. If you go up to your Move tool, you can see that you just cut that right out. And of course, when it's in your clipboard, you can now pop that into any other document and hit the V key, and you've added that particular clip to another uh, photograph. All right, so uh, let's maybe take a look at the other tool. Remember to get rid of the selection that you've already made. Oh, here's where we can uh, maybe show you how important the history palette is. With your history palette open, you can now step back to any point just by clicking on the point where you were, where you want to go back to. You could even go back to where the photograph was first opened. Okay, so we've got our photograph back. Now let's maybe take a look at the elliptical marquee tool and what we mean by elliptical is that it can create an oval shape or just by moving your mouse around you can create more like a circle and when you're happy with the shape or at least close to happy just let your mouse button go and now you've got your selection and if you want to nudge it just a little bit you're not quite happy with the position of your Oh, it looks like we have our, from a moment ago, where we were showing you how you can change your selection um, by choosing an option up here. We've still got that selected. So let's maybe just go back to our open over here in our history palette. And this time, before we make our selection with our elliptical tool, let's just go and click on this once. And now when we make our selection. If we're not quite happy with the positioning of it now, you'll see that your cursor is just a little bit different. It's got an arrow that looks kind of like a move tool. We can move that around. If we wanted to make a perfect circle, uh, let's uh, deselect that. Remember, Control D. If we wanted to make a perfect circle, just hold your Shift key down and you'll see that as you drag, it's going to make that perfect circle.
That's with the shift key held down. And remember, you can move it around. Let's deselect that. If we want to uh, choose our center point from which to start, rather than going from the side down, we can choose a center point and hold down the Alt key. And now as we select, our circle grows from the center point. If we don't hold the Alt key down, you'll see that uh, our steeple there is not in the center. But this time, let's, we want to make sure that our steeple, let's maybe choose this steeple, we, that we want to make sure that that always stays in the center, and you can do that by holding down the Alt key before you start dragging. And now as you create whatever way you go, the place where you click down is going to remain in the center. All right, so how can we use this? Well, again, we can uh, choose a, a nice selection here, maybe make, move it up to make sure it uh, gets all the steeples and then hit our copy key, bring it into a, uh, another document to kind of make a collage, making many different layers in a photograph. We could create a new document again, and the clipboard will uh, notice what size we have in our clipboard and create a new document with an empty space, the exact same size of the selection we've made in our clipboard. Now just hit Control V to bring that into a new document. How would we use something like this? Well, let's say you wanted to create uh, an oval-shaped image and place it inside one of your documents on your website, just to kind of make it a little bit different than a normal boring square or rectangular image in your document. Well, here's how you can do that. First of all, we want to resize it. It's way too big for our website. So you remember how to do that with your Control-Alt-I key held down. We can resize this to something that's more suitable for the internet. Let's say 400 pixels. And then when we go to save this, let's do a save as, and you can do that either up here from file, menu item, and go down to save as, or you can Start learning again. The keyboard shortcut for that is Control Shift S. And now we've opened up a window to save this document as something other than just a normal Photoshop document. We want to save it uh, as a PNG image because that will preserve our transparent background if we save it as a PNG. And let's just give it a name. Pagodas, and that'll bring up a dialog box to save this as a PNG. We hit OK, and now this image, and let's just maybe ex zoom in on it a little bit. Is that not actually that small? It'll look something more like that in your document. We won't take the time to pop that into a website uh, page right now, but in an upcoming tutorial in Joomla, in one of our Joomla tutorials, we'll pop this into an article. And if you're interested in learning how to make beautiful websites, I invite you to come on over to joomlaskills.com and we're showing there how you can build beautiful websites, powerful websites, very flexible websites using uh, a program called Joomla. So we hope to see you over there. But for now, I believe that that does it on how to work with the marquee tool in Photoshop.